two Guzma and a Lycanroc. Uh, these are going to be a little bit of rough prizes for both players going forward in this match. And here we go. Players are off. We're getting a ton of action here. It's a kind of classic matchup in the format, I feel like. Zorark versus Buzzwool. Yeah, uh, really just the top two decks people thought going into this tournament. And it's a pretty close matchup as well. Uh, Buzzrock kind of hitting for weakness against the Zorark decks, really applying a ton of early game pressure and uh, late game pressure as well with Beast Rings and Max Elixirs. Meanwhile, Robin really trying to capitalize on Trash Lanch with that Garboder uh, just to try to take big knockouts. We do see action is on Robin first. It wins up with a Trubbish, a uh, Mysterious Treasure going to discard a Guzma, find a type of Lele, and a classic Zorg. GX deck start with a Bridget. Yeah, Mysterious Treasure, a great addition to this deck, being able to find any of your Garboder line and your Tapu Leles. So it essentially is just an extra Ultra Ball for your deck. Yeah, for, with discarding one fewer card, uh, Ultra Ball already, you know, a, a staple of the format. So in decks that can use it, Mysterious Treasure slots right in as well. Looks like Zorua and Trubbish are the picks uh, from the Bridget, just deciding on what the third one will be. Yeah, uh, he actually chooses not to get a third one, because if you remember, two Zorua in the prizes, he has one in his hand. Doesn't really need anything else. He can't get anything else. All right, so the bench is going to be pretty full on Robin's side. Let's see what else he has in his hand, what else he can do this turn. Besides, just play Pokemon down. There's that second Zorua that you mentioned. Does have an energy attached to the Garbo uh, Chubbish, rather, and passes the turn. The hand does look a little anemic from Robin, really just relying on the Evo Soda to get a Zorark GX next turn and try to trade into something else. Glowstone attached to the active Rock Rock. We can see an Ultra Ball coming down on Bert's side. Yeah, his hand is full of supporters. Uh, really not what you want to see, but it's kind of better than what Robin is showing right now. So. What exactly is Bert trying to do here? Is he going to focus on the Buzzwool GX, or is he going to focus on the non-GX Buzzwool? Or where, where is he supposed to navigate in this matchup? Uh, you can really go both routes to this game. Uh, play the early baby Buzzwool game, kind of force your opponent to knock out three Pokemon, then you get big GXs out, get a lot of energy in play, and then just control the game from there. Or you can go the early Buzzwool GX, uh, try to sneak in a couple knockouts, and especially with two Trubbish on the board, really soften those up for later on in the game. Uh, and then they knock that out and turn Sledgehammer on immediately. And it looks like that is the plan that Bird is going with as we see Ultra Ball find a Buzzwool GX, one of two copies in his deck. I know a lot of players uh, playing one or two, focusing more heavily on the non-GX uh, Buzzwool. And here we go. So perfect start here, Sycamore for seven. Wow. Uh, Interesting to see that he did not draw into a Brooklet Hill to try to find the Diancie Prism Star, one of the cards that actually allows him to take a knockout on this Trubbish. Uh, he did get the Beast Energy, but that dealing only 60 damage total. Uh, not going to take the knockout here, but will apply a lot of pressure, especially with kind of Robin's slow-ish hand. And we do see the Beast Energy come down, retreat the Rockruff into my Buzzwool. And that's saying his hand for next turn is not too shabby. Energy, Max Elixir, and a Choice Band to go along with the Cynthia. His next turn is poised for some fireworks. All right, here is an Evo Soda from Robin. You know, he did, he did not have the strongest hand as far as, you know, drawing cards and supporters go, but that Zorak GX will hopefully fix things for him, allowing him to use that trade ability to swap out cards. Also has a Guzma in hand from the top of his deck this turn. He really does need this trade to fix everything for him because... As it looks right now, a Lycanroc can totally disrupt his board right here. So it's a really important trade. Yep, so here we go. I'm going to determine what card, which card to choose of the trade. Guzma goes to the discard pile. Two Let's see. Fresh cards. It does not get much of anything. He will be able, if he wants to, to retreat the active Trubbish and or even just evolve the active with the Garboder and try to deal some damage, but with only one item in Bert's discard, even against a Buzzwool GX that's weak to Psychic, it's not going to do anything. And oh, puzzle of time into another puzzle of time. It's already uh, a feel bad moment to play a single puzzle of time, and when the first card you see is another one right on top of your deck, it hurts that much more. Yeah, it's just directly punished. All right, here is an energy choice band comes down 
And we see an Acid Spray. Yeah, I actually like this because Acid Spray getting the energy is just one, an extra card that Bert needs to find for his turn. But we know he has everything and actually draws the Diancie Prism off the top. Uh, again, it was one card <laughs> short for the actual knockout turn one. All right, Max Lixer does find a uh, basic fighting energy. Going to go ahead and attach it to that Rock Ruff. Yeah. Getting a little bit of energy acceleration, trying to you know combat the acid spray a bit. There is Dancy Prism Star hitting the board, as you said. Basic fighting onto the back to Buzzwool, and then a Cynthia. Yeah, really looking for a Lycan Rock GX here. Bloodthirsty Eyes could really open up the board. Meanwhile, just taking a free knockout with Drat Punch. Yeah, Lycan Rock GX is a very very powerful card, a very powerful effect, and then it's even coupled with very strong attacks as well. So not a surprise that it's one of the most played. GX is in the format, and that Buzzwool, like in Rock in particular, is one of the best decks. All right, let's see if he draws into it. One more card. Does not find it, so even though his turn still will be pretty good, cannot be the best it could possibly be. I think he'll take it here. There's a lot of ways that could have gone worse after uh, getting Acid Sprayed. Yeah, and one important card that we see in his hand that he plays is that Fighting Fury Belt. It might come in huge later on in this game when... Uh, Robin's really trying to hit for those numbers. All right, and there is the first knockout of the game. The other Trubbish is now being promoted. Zorak taking a little bit of splash damage from the Jet Punch there. And your favorite card, oh, gets traded away immediately, Kartana GX. Yeah, so unfortunately with that puzzle of time, looking at the top three, uh, there was no action on top of the deck. Uh, three cards that do not shuffle your deck, three cards that do not draw you more cards. So he kind of just has to trade to get all three of those away so he doesn't draw them the next few turns. Exactly. No, and only access to one Zorak, so he oh, can't he's really debating playing deeper. another Puzzle of Time. Tapu Lele on top of the deck. That'll do it. Uh, maybe it's a little too late. It'll, we'll, we'll have to see. And we are going to see an attack here, putting a lot of damage on that Buzzwool, but not quite getting the knockout. I think this is the first ever Buzzwool GX to survive two attacks <laughs> from Garboder. <laughs> Man, uh, he is a tank. All right, and so what, what does uh, Bert need here to press his advantage when he's, he's, pretty, he's pretty far ahead but really only has that buzzwool? Uh, what, what's he looking for on this turn? I, I, I still believe he's either going to try to look for that Lycanroc or play a Guzma this turn, uh, try to take some knockouts and force his opponent into a classic Sledgehammer turn next turn. You really just put all the pressure on Robin to actually do something. And yeah. with essentially no Zoroarks or anything like that, it's going to be rough. And just as you say that, the Guzma does come down. Yeah, and it does, uh, I believe, 160 yeah, with that up. Jet Punch. Uh, that's a powerful, powerful uh, Ultra Beast there. Yeah, that's going to be a knockout. 30 damage on the Zoroark. No more access to trade, although we do know that the top of uh, Robin's deck does have a... Tapu Lele, so we'll be able to get back into this, but facing down a pretty powerful board on Bert's side. Yeah, it's just really not been the game for Robin here. He went for that early Bridget, but the Zorark not finding him anything, and then just the top of his deck has not been giving him what he needs. Parallel City come down limiting, comes down limiting Bert's bench. He's determining what to put in the discard pile. Kind of an awkward situation. You do have two... Rock rough, but one of them has a float stone, which can be pretty useful. And the Dancy obviously is there to power you up. So he's going to go ahead and get rid of the uh, non GX Buzzwall. Yeah, it is the card that's probably easiest for him to find with Brooklet Hill and having access to two Bloodthirsty Eyes potentially later on in the game, I think is a little bit better than just having Buzzwall for next turn right away. Seems like a reasonable choice as we're getting end here. Six cards for Robin, only three for Bert. That's uh, the, one of the downsides to being aggressive and taking so many prizes. Yeah, but it, I've seen games where you just get end the three and don't draw anything. Um, that's exactly what Bert did not do, though. He <laughs> drew Brooklet Hill, Lycanroc, and a strong energy. Uh, not having a supporter for next turn, but having pretty much everything he would want to find with the supporter. And Zor uh, Robin does find the Zorak GX, so he has that trade online once again. All right, is that a town map making our prize cam useless? <laughs> uh, we will just see the backs of the cards now. But now he's like, oh, yeah, 
You see, I prized two Zorua. It's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> there it is in action, the prize cam. <laughs> oh, that's classic. All right, Field Blower. Getting rid of the float stone's pretty big. That means he can't Burklet Hill into the Buzzwole and then just retreat willingly with that strong energy to attack. All right, that Buzzwole GX finally falls. Robin takes his first prizes of the game. He knows what they are, so he takes double colorless and Zora. Yeah, so we might actually see a dangerous rogue come down from this Lycan Rock. Uh, it could be one of his ways to actually just pull ahead in this game for good. Knocking out the only Garboder, leaving Robin with just a Zorok GX and two Tapu Lele in play. He's going to take his time, consider exactly what he wants to do, what he can do with his hand. Uh, early advantage, but again, he had a lot of resources invested into that Buzzwool and didn't really have... Ooh, he does have the Lycanroc in hand. Yeah, he pretty much has everything except for, like, a play for next turn. Right. Super Art coming down. Going to go ahead and shuffle back in a Buzzwool, Fighting Energy, and Tapu Lele. Yeah, so essentially, Bert really just set up to where he can take a knockout with this Lycanroc and then hope to draw an energy and take his last prize. You really leave your opponent with nothing, but you kind of have nothing yourself. So we could see either a Remoraid here, because it also turns on Octillery for an out for him to draw, uh, or we could just see him getting the Buzzwool and attacking with that this turn as well. Yeah, really just doing it all here. No more Parallel City in play. He has a Lycanroc strong in his hand. Does decide, looks like after some debate, to get the Remoraid, kind of make the next few turns more consistent if he needs them. Yeah, and to be fair, uh, Robin's not really doing much damage with Zorak either. And actually goes for the knockout. Uh, this is kind of a good play. It's a little bit softer to end, but you get two cards when your hand is essentially nothing else. So those two cards, if you don't get end, could be pretty good for you. Yeah, he, has, he had zero cards in hand before that. Two, one, two cards off of the prizes. And it's Guzma Energy, kind of exactly what he needs. Yeah, so sometimes that's how it happens. One prize remaining. He is going to get end, though. All right. All right. This is going to be a big end because Bert does have quite a few outs to draw into. Uh, he will need to draw, I think, Strong Energy Choice Band takes the knockout. Or, and he will start yeah. his turn with uh, two cards after he... Takes his draw for the turn, so let's see what he can put together here. Meanwhile, on the other side, four cards for Robin, so uh, no access to trade just yet, but four cards to one is a pretty big advantage. Didn't quite see. Ooh, the one card, card I believe, is an Ultra Ball. This is one way that going for the Zorark knockout really just hurts with the end, is because instead of leaving yourself with two prizes to make Ultra Ball a live card when you draw it, you're left with one, so... Not having the two cards to discard for it means Octillery's kind of a little bit harder to find. All right, and there's the Enhanced Hammer, getting rid of the strong energy, putting that Lycan Rocket, just one energy attached. Uh, also removing the Brooklet Hill. Tapu Lele comes in for an attack. Could we actually see a come from behind victory He says to pass the turn back. It's action is on Robin once again. Again, this is how backbreaking N can do. We've talked about it all weekend. Uh, how powerful N can be when you have an aggressive start but don't have any consistent draw power in the form of, you know, Octillery or something like a Ranguru. Yeah, and uh, just another double color is coming down on the Tapu Lele, dealing 100 damage to this Lycanroc. All right, is the top of his deck favor to him. He has the Ultra Ball now and two other cards. Yeah, so he just had to wait a turn to try to draw that third card so we can Ultra Ball for that Octillery and kind of get going, but he kind of has to wait a few turns now to see what he can do. All right, five fresh cards off the Abyssal Hand. He had a few bad draws there, but he is right back into it, although still in a kind of a rough position there with a uh, Lycanroc GX with not many hit points left and only one energy attached. All right, Brooklet Hill, Buzzwolves, all that. Uh, not what you want to see. He did shuffle in that Tapu Lele. So Ultra Ball for Tapu Lele gets him a supporter he can play for the turn. And that Brooklet Hill bumping the Parallel City, meaning he can actually bench it as well. And there's the Brooklet Hill coming down. He drew all his Buzzwolves. He can't, doesn't have anything else to search for. 
All the buzzwolves are in his hand. I mean, there's one left, but... I, I think he would take it out here and then just discard the other buzzwolves in your hand. Uh, you really don't want to draw into him with the supporter that you get, because you still could just win this turn. Uh, strong energy choice band takes or regular energy choice man takes the knockout on the Tapu Lele. He would need a float zone as well to retreat, but it is doable. All right, here is the Ultra Ball. Getting rid of one of the Buzzwall, and is that a Brooklyn Hill, I believe? Yeah, just more cards he can't really play. So eyeing down that Tapu Lele, almost for sure getting a Professor Sycamore here, because you don't want to draw into that Buzzwall. All right, he started his turn with a uh, three cards in hand. He went up to five. He used all of them, and now he's going to draw up to seven off this Sycamore. Yeah, and it's going to be a big Sycamore. He does need quite a few cards, but there's quite a lot of them left in his deck still. Drawing quite a few cards as well. Ooh, uh, strong energy there. But a lot of supporters. Wow. Not even any B-strings or elixirs here. Uh, no way to retreat. Kind of missed his opportunity here for that sledgehammer and the B strings as well because this Lycan Rock is going to get knocked out and yeah. Robin's going to go down to two prizes. Yeah, exactly. Not the best draws, but it is keeping him in this game at least. Looks like that strong energy is going to come down. Uh, just debating. Yeah, you see him debating because with the presence of Enhanced Hammer in Robin's deck, it's essentially just throwing an energy away if he has it. And you win by just going Energy Lycanroc or Energy Guzma, taking a knockout on the Zorua. And Virtus has to pass back to Robin. Four prizes left, but closing in on this game after uh, having a huge prize deficit at the beginning and backbreaking end really put Bert in a tough position. Yeah, this game's really gone back and forth. And with just one prize remaining, this N again will put him down to one card. But now he has Octillery, kind of the best combat against this late game end. Yeah, at this point, he's pretty much end proof. Uh, not worried about that anymore. Just the having to get the artillery was the hard part. But once it's there, it's there, unless it gets knocked out. Well, that won't be happening this turn, at least. Yeah, and one card Robin is really hoping for off this end is a Zorark GX, kind of making it a little bit harder for Bert to take a knockout next turn. Yeah, uh, Robin is certainly not end proof in the current situation he's in. He's, he's going to draw a lot of cards here. He's going to get some cards at the prizes, but an end with a. No Zorark could potentially set him back. Yeah, and I don't see a Zorark in there. There's a Puzzle of Time, Mysterious Treasure, Floatstone, and a Garbotoxin Garboder. <laughs> Not what you want to see here. So it's all in on this Tapu Lele right now. We're going to see another single puzzle from Robin. That, that's what they're meant for, right? You use the first ability. <laughs> to look at the top three, you have to fix your draws. Yeah, that's, just make your deck more consistent. Tapu Lele putting in a lot of work here. There's the knockout. Two prizes remaining. And getting that Zorark from the prizes. He missed it off the end. So it's like, might as well get it now. Right, Zorark, Sycamore. But we see the Lycan Rock, the one card that he drew. And he has the strong on there that is knockout on the Zorua. Burt Walters will take game one here against Robin Schultz. Yeah, well, got, got to be a heartbreaker for Robin there. You just, you're, you're so far behind for so long. And you start to claw back into it, but cannot quite get there. Point only has one prize remaining, and Lycanroc comes off the top. Yeah, uh, it was kind of inevitable just because he has so many chances to get it. He has the Ultra Balls in his deck. He has the Abyssal Hand to draw until he is five, and he didn't even need to use it. He just had it. Yeah, when, you, when your opponent's playing like Rock GX and you, uh, he goes down to one prize, you can just kind of say, all right, well, I, I have to get very, very lucky for him not to hit here, so... That was just game one, though. Robin does have two more opportunities to win the game and the match and advance to 3-0 in one, but Bert only needs to win one more. So tough position as we're about uh, halfway through the tournament here. Kind of players, you know, records are going to uh, solidify up. But 2-0 two, two, and one, obviously, great record. You know, whoever wins this match will be well positioned, but nothing guaranteed yet. Yeah, uh, both players still technically undefeated. Uh, taking those ties, uh, unfortunate, but still... Better than a loss. Yeah, better than a loss. Going to put early ties have a potential to put you in an awkward situation later when you know if you if you can't 
you have to, you know, you can't draw in, you have to play or something in your last round, but these players aren't thinking about that right now. They're just focused on, you know, one match at a time. We still have a lot of tournament to play, and, you know, both these players hoping to uh, make top eight and maybe even make Sunday. Yeah, uh, that is the goal for everyone here. And looking at Robin's hand, he does have a Zorua to start with, but I don't believe I see any supporters in his hand. Looks like he's actually opting to start with Kartana GX. Yeah, maybe uh, a good old combo of Town Map and Blade GX to just pick what he wants from the prizes. That would be the second dream. You know, winning Worlds is great, but getting the Town Map and Blade GX, that, that's pretty good too. To you, getting to just use Blade GX is... Uh, <laughs> and we see another single puzzle of time. Wow, and looking at the top, you're like, oh, my next three turns are going to suck. Well, he does have the Zorak at least. Um, that he, I, I, don't, I think he put it on top. I wasn't quite sure. Uh, uh, he has the Zorak in hand as oh, well. Okay. So he, uh, he put the unit energy on top, so he could play GX next turn. Uh, the real question is, can that Zorua survive? And by the looks of it, yeah. Bird's hand is almost just as bad. Yeah, just not really a lot going on for either player there. There's a unit energy. He did stack oh, on top. Yeah. There's a Zorak GX. So... Robin already knows the top two cards of his deck, and he knows that they do not get him any farther on his board state this turn. So he's going to have to trade, uh, but that's just so he doesn't draw dead next turn. Yeah, he just has to be through the cards. He does have a Trubbish even, actually, so not the worst top three cards. And then now, see it? yeah, Blade GX here, picking a random prize. Hope it's a supporter. I'm, I'm excited. Inches towards the GX marker. There it is. And the prize was a field blower. <laughs> Not exactly what you want. Uh, you are up a prize now. So that, that's good. Back, action back on Burton. It looks like, again, uh, hand not really. Oh, no, he just he did all the Cynthia this turn. All right. So after a slower start on turn one, now he has a Cynthia. He has a Buzzle with two energy. Um, see what he can put together here. Really hoping for some Rock Ruffs, I assume. Just needs to build up his board a little bit better. Yeah, Rock Ruffs, Remoraid would be great. Uh, even just Diancy Prism to apply a little bit more pressure. Choice Band would also be pretty good as well. Uh, one card that didn't come up last game, but uh, Fighting Fury Belt would also uh, kind of keep that Buzzful around for a good while. All right, and here is the Brooklet Hill presenting Burt with his first opportunity to search his deck, determine what's prized, as well as find a basic Pokemon. Looks like he, he does have Ultra Balls on hand, too. So I, I expect that we'll see um, several Pokemon come down this turn. Just, it's a matter of how he wants to sequence it. Yeah, it could be Double Rock Ruff, could be Rock Ruff, Diancie, could even be Rock Ruff and Remory, but I think one of them has to be Rock Ruff. Yeah, it, Rock Ruff is just a very... Like, we saw Lycanroc just completely... Uh, take over that game, end up winning the game for him. Just a very, very important piece to this puzzle. All right, and there it is, Rockruff on the bench. Couple ends, Ultra Ball, and Strong Energy in his hands, so he chooses not to play it, kind of wanting to conserve his resources a little bit. All right, now 60 damage, both on the Kartana and the Zora GX. And we know that uh, Robin has access to one trade, but really not much else. Again, the draw off the prizes was a field blower. Yeah, field blower off the prizes, double colorless off the top of his deck. Two cards that don't really help him out here. And N off the trade as well. That will give him at least some play this turn. And now he's going to decide if I attach the double colorless to the Kartana, he can shuffle it back in with Glade Blade. It is a you may effect. So 70 damage. You could shuffle it in if you think it's going to get knocked out next turn, or you can just leave it there and be like, ah, you have to deal with this guy. This Kartana really going in here. I don't think I've ever seen a Gale Blade uh, <laughs> on coverage before. Choice Band, two energy cards attached there. We're going to see an N come down, it looks like. Yeah, Gale Blade actually one of the preferred things to do after a Blade GX if you don't win the game with it, just because it soaks up a little bit of damage, and then like, all right, I'll just shuffle it back into my deck. And get the double colorless back, get the choice band back, unit energy, all that. Fortunately, it doesn't reset the GX marker, so not going to be able to do any silly things with Blade. Just Blade GX, all six prizes. 
The, the, this is a huge end, though. Uh, unfortunately, Robin, since he did blade, it's a little worse end than it would have been. Yeah, minus one card for him, but probably won't be too relevant in the, the long run. Uh, one thing that's pretty important to note is uh, Buzzwell Lycanroc, when they go this early aggro Buzzwell GX, they're really just hoping, like, okay, this guy will get knocked out, then I'll turn on Sledgehammer, all that stuff. Well, since Robin Blade GX, he's at five prizes. If he takes the knockout on the Buzzwell GX, then he goes down to three, and he just completely bypassed Sledgehammer. Yeah, yeah really, really interesting uh, way that that is going to turn out here, turn off a lot of... Uh... Sledgehammer ability from Bert. Never what you want to see, but <clears throat> something he's going to have to deal with here. And here we see Mysterious Treasure discarding the Trash Lanch Garboder just to get a Trubbish from the deck to the bench. Depending on if he shuffles in the Kartana, he could be choosing to bring that up just to maybe take a big hit. Trubbish Garboder joining a Zora on the bench as well. I know. Um, Sorry, the Zorark in Robin's hand as well as well as an Evo Soda, so those Pokemon can... It's a Tapu Lele, Tapu Lele. Lele. So it's, it's definitely a lot better. Uh, Tapu Lele having a supporter for next turn. Uh, most likely another N. Uh, even just, yeah, Sycamore, since he really won't have a hand. Yeah, he's not going to have anything in hand. Just taking the most aggressive supporter in Sycamore. Seven fresh cards for next turn. And then, yeah, Glade, or Gale Blade. Shuffle back into the deck. Oh, brings up the Garboder, uh, kind of forcing his opponent to use Absorption or Knuckle Impact to take the knockout. But by doing that, he commits a third energy to essentially just a weakened Buzzwell. Yeah, it does shuffle in, so now he's going to have all those resources back and the damage is off the Kartana. We'll have the Kartana that's not going to be as useful left in his deck, but worth it there to shuffle back in. All right, here we do see an Ultra Ball from Bert kind of turning on his hand. His hand was a little anemic with a bunch of strong energy and not much else. Does get that Lycanroc, though. Uh, definitely a good way to go around this Garboder uh, while still charging up his bench, probably attaching an energy to the Lycanroc. Right, Bloodthirsty Eyes has been... A big part of the format recently, a big part of this tournament, and it doesn't look like that's going to stop anytime soon. I do like the Max Elixir before playing the Lycanroc, because that way you can attach it to the Rock Ruff. Remember, Max Elixir only attaches to basic Pokemon on your bench. Yeah, proper sequencing with these sort of things is really important, and I don't expect anyone at this level to make uh, common mistakes like that. Looks like Bert just doing a little bit of thinking. Yeah, it still does have access to that Brooklet Hill, most likely eyeing down that Remoraid. Uh, yeah, he does have the Octillery in his deck. That's one thing you always want to check, especially when he plays a one or he plays a two-one Octillery. So you really want to make sure that Octillery is in there because it's so important late game, as you saw last game. Yeah, the counts of the support Pokemon, the ones that evolve at least, are always pretty interesting because you take a pretty big risk if you don't have Octillery in certain spots, but you also can't afford to fill your deck with it. And here we see he's actually going pretty aggressive. Since he got that Max Elixir on that Rock Ruff, he is still threatening a dangerous road next turn, so he goes and brings up the Zoroark, and it takes a knockout with Knuckle Impact, and this is one of the few turns where you can actually Knuckle Impact pretty freely because I'm going to most likely get knocked out. Yeah, yeah, probably won't end up mattering. And like you said, that Lycanroc is already um, set up there with an energy on it. We know he has a strong in hand. Evo Soda we talked about earlier finds a uh, replacement Zorark, so going to be able to trade once this turn. Yeah, and with Bert having kind of a slower start these first few turns, uh, it really kind of aids him in this matchup because there's only two item cards in the discard. And there's the Sycamore we also knew about. No hand, seven new cards. Definitely be a big seven looking for double colorless so he could take a knockout here. He does find one. He finds two, actually. He actually finds uh, a lot of what he needs. He has um, you know, field lowers if he wants to get rid of the Brooklet Hill, Floatstone, Mysterious Treasure. A lot of options here. And then he, we actually see him trade away the Zorua. He thought about benching it, but it does 
add 50 more damage to Lycanroc GX's Dangerous Rogue. And right now, it doesn't look like he's taking the knockout. Granted, he has a strong energy. That means that's 170. So he does take the knockout anyway. But you really don't want to just make your opponent's knockouts easier for them. Yeah, exactly. You got to make him work for it. Even if you think it's likely that they can hit it multiple ways, you just got to, you can't play right into it like that. A lot of Mysterious Treasures and Fuel Blowers in Robin's hand, trying to just go through some of them, especially because he might be hurt by an N in the next few coming turns. The float stone down on the Trubbish. And there is the knockout. Knockout. Three prizes remaining for Robin. And looking at Bert's hand, it is pretty sweet. He <laughs> draws the Guzma for the turn, uh, a card that could change his play here. He really just wanted to draw like a card he can discard with the Ultra Ball, like a card that didn't really matter. Uh, but now we might see him just kind of load up his field a little still have the Ultra Ball for the Octillery, which was on top of his deck, uh, but kind of go for Guzma Dangerous Rogue, take a big knockout on maybe the Zorark or the Garbodor as well. Unfortunately, misses on the Max Elixir there, so just going to be playing fair this game, just one, or this turn rather, just one energy attachment. Going to be the strong energy that we knew about from last turn. Oh man, this is such a big decision here. All four cards in his hand essentially are what he wants, but not what he wants at the same time. He does decide to go on with a strong onto the Baby Buzzle and Guzma up the Zorark. All right, so yeah, it's not actually a knockout. Uh, maybe he was thinking Sledgehammer did 120 damage, but right now it's still base 30, so he does 100 damage with that strong energy not taking a knockout like he thought and could be the opening that Robin needs to steal this game too. Yeah, we, we saw Burton go for the prizes there. I think uh, what the, uh, the Kartana Blade GX that came up in the way you said it. Kind Blade of just, GX is amazing, guys. Yeah. <laughs> it just makes the prize count very awkward. And uh, clearly, you, you can see the look on his face when he did it. Just kind of clearly noticed, knew it was a mistake and just may, maybe cost him the game. Remains to be seen. We'll have to see. Uh, Robin does still need to draw and do a few cards to get something going here. He does have that unit energy, as you see in his hand, as well as Guzma and a few other things and options to do. See, uh, some of the cards in Bert's discard pile are uh, kind of turned to the right. That's because they're item cards coming up for Trash Lanch. So just easy way for uh, players and even us and you guys at home to keep track of how much Trash Lanch is doing. Yeah, we actually could see Robin attach the unit to the Tapu Lele and, uh, or even the Garbodor and Guzma up the Remoraid to take a knockout, shutting off Octillery as an option, but choosing to go for the Lycanroc here. Uh, he does deal 60 damage with Trash Lanch. And really just putting pressure on the biggest threat on Bert's side of the field. A little bit of damage onto the Lycanroc. Ultra Ball immediately comes down finding an Octillery, five fresh cards coming off the top for Bert. Yep, Octillery just proving how powerful it is. If you aren't playing Zork, you probably should be playing Octillery. Uh, it's, that's at least how I've seen most of these decks run. Yeah, uh, some kind of consistent draw power has been really important. We've talked about how powerful N is in the late game. Um, but even outside of that, just you need some way to refresh your hand and find the pieces you need, whether that's a Ranguru, Octillery, Zorark. Uh, not many decks can get by without playing uh, one of those. Yeah, and remember, Robin is still at three prizes, so any B-string that Bert draws is live. He has that Tapu Lele, probably searching down... Okay, Guzma here <laughs> really wants to finish off that knockout on that Zorark. Yeah, we've seen Bert be pretty aggressive with that sort of thing, just kind of very focused on taking knockouts, not... Not too worried about N, not too worried about, um, you know, exposing himself. Just, I'm trying to, I'm trying to complete the game. I'm or trying to complete the match. I'm up a game. And he does take the knockout on the Zorark. Two prizes remaining. Potentially one knockout away from advancing to 3-0-1. And yeah, attaching that beast energy there as well. Threatening a big swing around for a lot of damage next turn. 
Uh, we'll have to see what Robin decides to do. At, at this point in the game, Dangerous Rogue is kind of getting worse and worse. Uh, you see only two bench Pokemon on Robin's side of the field. That means it's only doing base 100 damage. Granted, with Diancie and with strong energies, that will add up. But uh, it'll be interesting to see how far that goes. Our mysterious treasure finds a Garbotoxin Garboder. Second double colors on that Tapu Lele. Building yeah, it up. Uh, Garbotoxin is now online. Robin kind of sees his game plan. He, he sees where this is going. Garboder can take a knockout on the Buzzwole uh, and not leave up kind of a fragile GX. But he also could try to attack with the Tapu Lele and say, you can't really knock me out. And we've seen N again. We said that uh, Bert was aggressive this whole match. We saw N uh, almost spell disaster for him in game one. Uh, he does have that Octillery. However, Garbotoxin is online now, so he uh, is at the mercy of the top of his deck with two prizes remaining. Yeah, uh, th this is going to be a big N. Getting this Buzzful knocked out, he needs an energy to even attack with the Lycanroc here. Uh, no Float Stones or anything like that in play for him as well. Strong energy remorades. We at least has an energy to take a knockout. But the question is, will he have play going forward? All right, not too relevant of cards off Robin's end. We're going to see a trash avalanche here. The strong Robin energy knockout. is actually one of the perfect cards he could have drawn here because it allows him to take a knockout on the Garboder with Dangerous Rogue. And a oh, Cynthia a off the top oh, of the right. deck. Burt has play and now the top of his deck is treating him pretty well. Yeah, he's right back in it. Going to be taking a um, knockout this turn. Going down to just one prize, six fresh cards. Not worrying about anything. Yeah, unfortunately, those beast rings that he's finally now drawing are completely useless. Robin at two prizes. Uh, those cards will just be stuck in his hand until he can find either an Ultra Ball or a Sycamore to get rid of him. Yep. And Dangerous Rogue GX Marker gets flipped. One prize remaining for Bert. We saw him in this position. Double puzzle of time here. He got a puzzle from his prizes and then draws a puzzle off the top of his deck. He has at least the energy to take a knockout with Tapu Lele. And that should be the game. As long as my math's right. Yeah, it looks like the player did <laughs> that too. And Bert is going to go ahead and concede. Wow, one prize remaining but cannot quite get there. We are heading into a game three. Yeah, well, we saw how close game one was, and it really just, Robin could have won the game. He just needed Bert to kind of whiff the next couple turns. Yeah, both, well, of, these, both of these games have been incredibly close. Yeah. Uh, just really, really back and forth. You know, one player seems to be in a commanding position, uh, and then just gets... Uh, I, I just want to point out, even though he did it in reverse order, Blade GX still won him the game. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's one, that's one way to look at it. Uh, man, what an exciting two games. We have an exciting game three coming up between Robin and Bert here, both at 2-0-1. And not much time left. I think about 10 minutes, but that should be enough to actually get kind of a good game going. Yeah, let's hope that this game can be uh, as back and forth and exciting as the last two. Always really fun when you have those games where it's not clear who's winning or it looks like one player is just dominating and then a few draws later, everything changes. And yet yeah, that essentially is what Pokemon is. You're never really out of it, uh, especially in this matchup for sure. And both players have set their basics. They're putting out their prizes. We are getting ready to head into game three. And it's looking pretty good for Bert here. Starts that Buzzwool GX and has quite a few supporters. Diancy Prism in his hand. He does have that Octillery and prized. Yeah, the one Octillery. So he's going to need to start taking some early prizes to try to dig that out or else uh, N is really going to come after him. He's going to figure out the Octillery is prized here with the Brooklet Hill activation. Looks like it's going to take a Rock Rough. Yeah, honestly, anytime you start Brooklet Hill and Buzzwool Lycanroc, uh, it, it's a good hand for you. Just being able to shape out the way you can play the next few turns, get those Rock Ruffs down so you can Bloodthirsty Eyes, get those Buzzwools ready so you can Beast Ring to them and Max Elixir to them. It, it's probably one of the best cards in the deck. Rowan putting the uh, Brooklet Hill back into play. 
It would be a lot worse of a card if it were a one-time thing, yeah. but <laughs> uh, we will get to use it every single turn. Thankfully. All right, Cynthia just proving its consistency here, drawing six cards. He does find an energy, but again, oh, even a basic energy, that's so much better. Uh, a lot safer to attach than that strong energy. Yeah, we saw Enhanced Hammer play an important role, and we are seeing, again, I've said it a million times, the classic Zorg start with a Bridget. Yeah, uh, I've seen less Tapu Lele search for Bridget than I have just regular Bridget in your hand. Yesterday we even had a player that just had all, just had a full bench of basics on the first turn, just had them all in his hand naturally. <laughs> all right, what's, what's this Bridget going to find? Are we going to see, oh, well, he's going to answer that for me as it looks like we're just getting a bunch of Zorua. Well, I think you're staring down this Buzzful GX with a Fighting Fury Belt. And your opponent didn't play any items in the discard and has this pretty aggressive start with an energy on the rock rough. And you have to believe he has at least an energy in his hand. So these Zoruas aren't really going to be long for the world. Uh, they're going to get knocked out pretty fast. So getting three is basically saying, I want at least one Zoro art by the end of like next couple turns. Yeah, I know not all of these are going to evolve. So I just need to fill my bench with them. And there's all three Zora on the field. A good field blower coming down. A uh, little preemptive on the Brooklet Hill for Bert, but he knew where it was going. Yeah, exactly. And Robin doesn't have an energy to attach. Looks like he's just thinking. Um, he has a few options. He can, yeah, so I think that's what he was considering was, do I want to play the parallel? What do I want to discard with this mysterious treasure? It actually goes for the Tapu Lele, feeling that Sycamore is better positioned in his hand over something like, I believe, the N that I saw. Mysterious treasure finds Tapu Lele. Supporters in hand, and we go back to Bert. All That's right. Replacement. Yeah. Fighting Fury Belt. Uh, a little bit better. Just <laughs> Fighting Fury Belt and the strong energy. And then a Sycamore discarding his hand of Guzma. There's the Lycan Rock. We have another Rock Rough and Buzzwool just getting everything here. Pretty good. And it brings up the Zora. Wants to take that knockout here. And really just applying a ton of pressure. That's exactly what Buzzwool GX does in this matchup. And once again, the aggression. Both players uh, speeding up their pace of play, realizing that we don't have infinite time left. Just, just uh, under eight minutes, we should be able to finish. Um, Bird, of course, has been aggressive this entire game, just taking, taking knockouts early and often, uh, executing his game plan perfectly. Yeah, and we actually see him decide to go with the N over the Sycamore, and I think that's just because he got that prize, played a lot of his cards, and his hand seemed a little too good. So you're like, okay, well, I have to do something. All right, and we are going to see a trade. Wow, we actually didn't see him evolve the Zoroa with 30 on it and not drawing a second Zorak GX. That is just a free prize next turn with Jet Punch. Yeah, and Robin's just forced to pass. Yeah, did not get a double colorless either. Uh, something he looked for. I believe he actually played the Tapu Lele down because we saw how good of an attacker it was last game. Bert, considering where he's going to make his energy attachment for this turn. Looks like it's actually going to go on the buzzwall, going full in on the buzzwall. Yeah, and we see him have a Guzma as well, but no way to really retreat. So he just decides to jet punch the active and take that knockout on the Zoro on the bench. Already up two prizes here, and it's only been two minutes. Yeah, absolutely. Again, very, very aggressive from Bert. Just taking prizes as often as possible. You know, the, the big buzzwall decks, I think, the, the ability to just go, you know, I have Deancey, I have Strong Energy or Beast Energy, I have Choice Band, I can just take these knockouts so, so aggressively. Yeah, has double puzzle time in his hand, but that's kind of a double puzzle where you're really only getting, like, it's, it's a rescue stretcher, and that's basically... <laughs> yeah, it's going to go ahead and get Parallel City and Azura, so resting Azura, Parallel City's coming out. Uh, Bert will need to get rid of one of the Pokemon on his bench. I mean, we saw him get rid of the Buzzwool just like he did last game. Yeah, he actually has the Counter Stadium in Brooklyn Hill, but not anymore thanks to that N. Uh, Brooklyn Hill is probably the best thing against Parallel City. You get your bench limited, but all right, I'll just play it, get a new bench right away. Yeah, it's basically going to end up with the same 
uh, thing, although I would expect a Rumor Raid to come down. Although the artillery is prized, I'm not sure if Bird has drawn it yet. But first, we're going to see an N. Six cards, the full six for Robin, and only four for Bert. And sometimes you see a card like Max Potion in these lists. Uh, we saw Poet actually play it earlier on stream, but uh, Robin not choosing to go with it. I think opting for Town Map instead. Uh, it would have been a card that is, would be pretty sweet to draw here. And wow, again, not getting double colorless here, having that unit energy uses his trade for the turn. Cartana might be a pretty good card here. Get rid of that strong energy, lower the damage output, and kind of prevent a big knuckle impact next turn. He also has the option to field blower his choice band and attach a float stone to the Lele to retreat to the Garboder. Because he could also field blower the Fighting Fury Belt, but you would still be short of taking the knockout here. Yeah, it looks like that's what he's considering. He's just doing some math, thinking about what he needs to do here. That Tapu Lele stuck active, unless it looks like he is actually going to go ahead and get rid of the choice band with the field blower. Yeah, you need a way to retreat, and you can't commit an energy to here, especially since you've been missing energy drops oh, all we're gonna, game. We're going to see it again. Hey, yeah. Your favorite uh, attack. Tra Trash Lance does not take the knockout, so go with something that does take a prize. Blade GX. One prize, it's an enhanced hammer. That's a pretty good prize. Yeah, no, no non-basic energy on the board quite yet, but we do know that this deck is pretty reliant on strong energy and even the beast energy. Enhanced hammer, never bad to have. And with that Ulch Ball, that is five items in the discard. That is enough for Trash Lance to take a knockout on Buzzwell GX. Uh, you kind of... Anytime you're playing against a Garboder deck, you tend to play the game until you reach a critical mass of items. And for Buzzwool, it's kind of awkward. Since you're weak to Psychic, your critical mass is essentially five. But since you're going to go with Rock for a lot of the game, then it starts getting to like 10. Right, yeah, you still have to, even though you are weak and even though it doesn't take many, uh, you still have to be careful about it. It can kind of be an awkward situation. Uh, this was a much bigger thing when Gar Garboder was everywhere, and it, oh, so much of the game was, oh, how many items are in your discard pile? Right, you, you have six, I do this much. All right, the second energy on the Lycanroc GX, and potentially dangerous rogue. But first, we're going to see a jet punch from the Buzzwool. All right, choice man, the draw for Robin here. If he finds a double colorless, he could try to Gale Blade again. We saw it last game. We may see it again. Mysterious treasure going to come down. One thing he does have to keep in mind is that Lycanroc is looking pretty threatening on the bench. The GX attack still available, and with one more energy, can start doing some pretty heavy hitting with Claw Slash. Robin realizes, all right, there's no special energy on the board. I'm just going to get rid of this enhanced hammer. I'm going to bring out my Garbo Toxin with the mysterious treasure. Garbotoxin, not as good as it was last game because Bert does not have an Octillery in play, but limiting that Diancie's uh, extra damage to everything could be pretty good. All right, and once again, an N, four cards and five cards for each player, respectively. And I still believe he has access to his trade. Correct. And uh, really just looking for energy here. Uh, it's kind of been this game. He hasn't really drawn into his double colorlesses when he needs them. Uh, hopefully, they've just been waiting until the perfect moment, and this might be the perfect moment. Looking at Burt's four cards, they look pretty good. Max Elixir, Choice Band, Buzzwool, and a Sycamore. Meanwhile, for Robin here, nothing but a unit energy in his N. Does he hit it off that trade? It does not look like it. He does have the unit energy, so with Cartana having one retreat, he can retreat into the Garboder and take the knockout with Trash Lanch. And there is the attachment on the Garboder, so options here are going to do just what you said. 
pay the rage free cost on the Kartana, or is he? Yep, paying the rage cost on the Kartana, sending up the guard builder. And the thing that is worrisome right now, though, is just with a regular basic fighting energy, this Lycanroc takes the knockout with Claw Slash, and I don't see any Pokemon on Robin's side of the field that can really deal with this Lycanroc in the next few turns. It, it could just run away with the entire game. And with uh, 20 seconds left, I think that's what Bert needs to do. Yeah, Max Lixer is going to miss that third energy. Uh, does get attached to the Lycanroc, but not much time remaining for these players, maybe taking an unfortunate draw here. Yeah, it's very important for Bert to play out his turn before time. Getting that extra turn to attack and take a knockout might exactly be what he needs. So we will let you know exactly when time is called. And I think time is called now. Judge motioning to Bert. You are turn zero. So he only has two turns to take four prizes, and I don't think he can get there. Yeah, he's going to need to take two prizes on each of his remaining turns. Uh, based on what we're seeing, I think... All right, well, he has an Ultra Ball. Ultra Ball does get Lycanroc GX. He will be able to bring up maybe that Kartana or the Tapu Lele or even the Zorark. All right, so here we go. Bert trying to turn this potential draw into a win here. There is the Lycanroc GX. Just as you said, Bloodthirsty Eyes, no Garbotoxin, so Bloodthirsty Eyes is freely available to him here. Yeah, and if he cuts off the Zorak GX from Robin, that means no trades for him next turn. It might be harder for him to find maybe a card like N, and if Bert just has like Guzma and a Floatstone in his hand, he could just win the game. Here comes the Bloodthirsty Eyes pulling up that Kartana. Kartana with 50 on it will take a knockout, or will be knocked out with Claw Slash here. Right, two prizes remaining for Bert, three for Robin as we head into turn one of time. Yeah, finally gets that auxiliary, but not really what he wants to see here. Robin, meanwhile, does have that Zorark still, and I believe another Zorark in hand does have access to a couple trades, if so and really needs a way to disrupt Bert. I, I don't believe he can go for the win, but he's definitely going to try to play for the tie. Yeah, unfortunately, if this match ends at a tie, it was really back and forth all three games. Are really, really good, really close, and tie is never what you want to see at this stage in the tournament. Both players looking for that win, but it remains to be seen whether either of them can actually get it. Now that uh, time has been called, uh, you know, players are expected to still maintain a clear pace of play, but um, there is no clock running exactly, so players often get more thoughtful in this, saying, okay, this is really intense, this is really close, you know, I need to make sure I don't make any big mistakes here. Yeah, these are the turns where you need to play perfectly. I think we've all been in a spot where we're trying to rush through and make just a simple, dumb mistake that ends up costing us the game, and it never, never feels good. I I've done that plenty of times. <laughs> All right, Mysterious Treasure gets the Tapu Lele. One attack for the end. We'll be able to put Bert down to two cards here. And hoping that he doesn't draw the exact cards he needs to take the game. Yeah. And there's his Zorak GX. Town map, map again, making our prize cam useless. And there is the end. Bert taking a moment just to look through Robin's discard pile and consider what he's played what resources he has remaining. We're going to get two cards off of this end with no draw power in play. See, I don't know most players' preferences, but whenever, whenever I would be on stream, I kind of like slow roll. Just don't look at the cards. I want, I want the, the stream to be the first ones to see the cards. And uh, going to maximize the hype. Yeah. Uh, it's a very important end. Uh, he does need quite a few cards. There's no Floatstone on his bench or an energy to maybe retreat someone. Everyone on his bench has to retreat. So a Guzma would not be able to just win the game on its own. He would need something else. And wow, Guzma fighting energy off the top. Uh, if he draws a Pokemon that has one retreat cost, that would work. If he draws a Floatstone, man. All right. Let's see... What's going to happen here? Still on Robin's turn. Doesn't look like... Uh, 
going to go ahead and trade away. He still has access to one trade. Double colorless Sycamore are the draws. Already had a double colorless in hand. He could attach the double colorless to the Garboder and go for an Acid Spray. Maybe discard an energy to prevent, like, prevent him from getting more cards. But, oh wait, no. Dangerous Rogue just knocks out anything anyway. I'm getting a little cute. It looks like he's considering what he wants to do here. Well, hey, he, he thought about it too. <laughs> And that's the head. That's the head. Discards the fighting energy. All right, we are now, I believe. All right, this is the card. Time. What does he draw? Another fighting. Draws a fighting. That, not gonna that doesn't do it. Uh, if he drew a strong energy, that would have taken a knockout on that Tapu Lele on the bench. But I think this may be it for him. Man. Yeah, you, can, you can see the look on his face, too. Just kind of shaking his head. It was so close. Just needed something to put together. He's just saying, okay, what, what can I do here? Can I actually can I actually get the winners? Is this gonna be a draw? Yeah, uh, just ten damage away from taking the knockout on that Tapu Lele on the bench. Unfortunate turn of events here as unless there's something we don't know about, I think this uh, what was a really exciting, really back and forth match will end up as a tie. Looks like there is the energy on the active Lycanroc, and we'll probably just see a Claw Slash for the knockout. Or, yeah, let's go Flashy. Let's go Dangerous Rogue for 270 <laughs> damage. All right, now we are, I believe, in turn three of time. Although, yeah. uh, Sycamore. And this is all just from us observing, but we do believe it's turn three. If Bert, okay, so we just got confirmation it is turn three. Yeah, so it looks like this game is going to end in a tie as Robin can't um, take three prizes and Bert was unable to finish the game. Uh, and, and that's kind of the sad, the sad handshake from both players. Just, all right, well, we're just going to go with a tie here. Yeah, an unfortunate tie to an exciting match there. Uh, really back and forth between two great players. And just showing that, yeah, both of these decks can win the tournament. It's just unfortunate that time stood in the way. Yeah, it's a bad sign when a match finishes and then both players just look unhappy. <laughs> like, no, no one's excited about what happened. Uh, unfortunate there, but both of these players, too.